Hello and welcome to episode one of TV Chat. I'm Mick Meanus on YouTube. I'm Mike Meanus. Gmail address smallvillemad at gmail.com. On Twitter, I'm EastEndersMad. And on Facebook, I'm Mick Meanus. Right, let's get started. Let's talk TV. I'm so excited. I want to talk about Dallas, the two part season finale. I want to talk about Gotham. And I, first of all, I want to talk about Emmerdale and that twist with Declan. Credit to Emmerdale showrunner Kate Oakes, who I've been slagging off all year for overloading us with Bartons, but you've got to give it to her. The Donna storyline was awesome. And now this. For, all, for a long time now, we've known that Charity aborted Declan's child. We thought Declan didn't know this. Last night, we found out it was Declan that poisoned Charity's wine, and it wasn't Megan. That's, that's brilliant. That's, um, that's a big twist. And now he's taken her to the middle of nowhere for a, a break. But actually, he's going to try and kill her. Obviously, I don't believe that Declan's going to succeed in killing Charity. But it's an exciting, high-paced storyline. These are the kind of storylines that we don't really get much of in Coronation Street anymore. Um, EastEnders, even when they do try and do something like this, doesn't really work. It just seems forced and contrived. Like... Alfie's fire last week. But, you know, Emmerdale, this is exactly what Phil Redman wanted. When he uh, rebranded Emmerdale Farm as Emmerdale, this is the kind of thing that he, he wanted to do to make it fast, paisy, action-packed, and even elements of uh, the, the glamour and glitz of Dallas and Dynasty. It's all in there. Um, Kate Oakes, I take back everything I've said. This is a massive twist. This is an exciting twist. I don't know how it's going to play out. It could play out different ways. Uh, they could um, air out all their grievances and then maybe decide to blame Megan for everything. I don't know. Hopefully that doesn't happen because that would annoy me. Um, obviously, he's not going to kill her. So either he's going to try and kill her and fail and, uh, and just ends up going inside or something else is going to happen here. I don't really know how this is going to conclude. I don't, I don't know how the character of Declan can carry on if he's caught out. I mean... But this is really exciting. This is the kind of thing Kate Oakes does so well. She, she you know, executed the Donna storyline really well. Obviously, she took over the Cameron storyline and really made it something amazing. And shocked a lot of people with some of the, some of the things that we saw. So this, this is something that I'm really excited about. To see our soaps doing this kind of stories. Of course, they can't be action-packed all the time. But there's got to be life about them. The thing is with Emma Dale and Corey, they've got good characters, they do good humour, and that's exactly what EastEnders can't do. EastEnders shouldn't do humour, it can't do humour, but I'm not here to talk about EastEnders for once. I'm obsessed with EastEnders. Anyone who knows me knows I have constructed a, a concept to rebrand EastEnders, as Phil Redman did with Emma Dale, and look at the success now. I've got a great idea. You can check out my videos, I Want to Run EastEnders, three episodes so far, but really excited about Emmerdale and um, just want to share my enthusiasm for what Kate Oakes is doing. Brilliant, I can't wait to see how the storyline unfolds. Right, let's move on to the two-part series finale of Dallas. Now, sorry, um, UK viewers, big spoilers because you've only just started watching season three of Dallas in the UK on Channel 5, but I've just watched the season three double finale Guys, this is brilliant. I think this Dallas now is maybe even better than it was originally. I mean, Dallas, you people who don't know, Dallas was a kind of a dramatic soap from America, set in Dallas, revolving around the Ewings. Uh, basically, we know the history, who shot Jar. It was a brilliant show. You lived, the, you lived it. You couldn't wait to watch the next episode. But what the lady, Cynthia Cedra, who relaunched Dallas, and it's not a reboot, it's a relaunch, because it's still the same show. It's still continuing from the old show, but this Dallas is brilliant. The pace, the writing, her casting is brilliant. Josh Henderson as John Ross is a modern-day J.R. Ewing. He's brilliant, he's bolshy, he's arrogant. He looks the part absolutely phenomenal. The, the finale is typical of what Cynthia has done with the show, really. Giving it pace, giving it excitement. Um, it's what I call it. It's an emotional twenty-four. Anyone who watches twenty-four with Keith Sutherland, well, this is not. You know, this is not um, CIA operatives on terrorism going on, but this is an emotional time bomb. It starts off very slowly, then 
like a time bomb, as the time gets down, as it's nearly finished, it gets more exciting, 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 boom. And that's what I love about it. And um, uh, we don't know if there's going to be a season four, but believe me, people, there's going to be a season four. A lot of uh, people out there, old, older fans, um, have their complaints and kind of seem to want it to be cancelled so they can say, oh, it can't work without Larry Hangman. But Larry Hangman was a wonderful man, a wonderful actor, and what he did with the character of Jail was phenomenal. But this is something else. This is a, this is a group effort um, led by Cynthia C. Dre, who, as I said, has done a magnificent job. All week, they, they've been telling us they're going to kill off one of the Ewings. Which Ewing dies? We were all guessing. Um, this is a big spoiler alert, guys. So, as I say, go away if you don't want to want to know what's going on. But basically, today, when I watched it, I found out that potentially Christopher Ewing is dead. Um, bas basically, um, Joaquim, or you want to call him Nicholas, has taken over this Mexican mafia. And he's doing dealing with loose ends. So obviously he set up this bomb to explode to kill Christopher because um, I suppose he feels he kept her from Elena. So he, Christopher seems to go in his car and it blows up. This is my thoughts on it. I do not believe that Christopher is dead for one minute. Um, apparently the season four premiere will, will be a time jump. So it'll be six months into the future. So some people have complained about that, saying, well, how, we want to get the reaction of Bobby. But I think they'll probably do flashbacks. Um, I think that's how they'll do it. I don't know how they're going to do it. But whatever Cynthia does, I believe in it. I believe in what she's doing with Dallas. I think it's fantastic. TNT, which is a cable network, aired Dallas on a big night, Monday nights, where all the big shows, big sporting events, American football, um, American wrestling, you know, WWF, and all of that stuff is on at the same time. And Dallas, after everything's counted, um, amasses around 3 million viewers. That doesn't sound like a lot. But for a cable network, uh, when it's going out against these big networks, CBS, Fox, ABC, NBC, it's going up against these networks and it's breaking even. It's amazing. So if TNT actually put it on a graveyard schedule, just imagine the success this show would have even bigger. But this show, make no doubt, has been... Um, Massive success, we know. We're, we're, we're probably heading for season four. Four years of New Dallas is a big success. A lot of people couldn't see it working. I had my doubts. It was a kind of a dated show. It was kind of the style it was made in. It was very 80s, but Cynthia has taken the show, taken its core concept, and kept, obviously, the core elements. Um, brought back, she brought back Larry Hagman, who's no longer with us anymore, of course, um, Patrick Duffy and Linda Gray. They were three important elements. She's brought some guest stars from the old series as well. But the new cast, Josh Henderson, uh, Jesse Metcalf, Georgiana Brewster, you know, Miss Gonzalez, I forgot her first name, but yeah, you know, just a brilliant cast with their own fans, are very popular, they look great, but make no mistake, these are people that are brilliant actors, especially Josh Henderson. He's a really good-looking, sexy guy, but at the end of the day, he's a brilliant actor. So the girls can love him and embrace that aspect of it. But also, us guys and um, maybe other people who don't just watch shows just to go, oh, any heart can embrace him as well. It's just a brilliant show. It's got so many different dynamics. It's so paced. It's so exciting. This season, um, the Ewings have gone up against the Mexican, Mexican Mafia. It's been amazing. That's kind of stuff we never used to see in Dallas. Um, a, a lot of people say it's not realistic, it's over the top. Dallas was always over the top. There's always stuff going on. Who shot JR? Over the top, but fun. Um, Bobby getting shot. Um, lots of different things in the past that were, you know, were over the top and unbelievable, but we watched it. Dallas was amazing because you can imagine a show about wealthy people not being... <laughs> Not people not really identifying with that, but because they were kind of a down to earth family, down to earth characters living on a ranch as well, um, I, f I think that kind of made them a bit more, a bit more real, and uh, that's why the show was amazing. We loved it. Um, so many people watched it back then, but it's a big show now. It's a phenomenon again. There is no question about it. TNT's Dallas is class. You can keep your Breaking Bad. You can keep your Walking Dead. You can say this, that, and the other. Dallas and Cynthia Cedre have done something amazing. In an era of CGI TV, 
of big event TV, Dallas is mixing it with the big boys and doing extremely well. So I just want to say thank you for Cynthia Cedre. I want to say Patrick Duffy, you were my hero as a kid and you still are now because, wow, uh, would they even, you know, what would Dallas be without Bobby? One day I'll have to be without Bobby, but right now he's about 67, Patrick Duffy. Looks amazing and um, I'm really excited about season four if it happens. I'm sure it will, guys. Don't worry. Even in an interview a few about a month ago, Josh Henderson, a.k.a. John Ross, told the fans, us, not to worry. So it's happening. So, right now, I want to talk about Gotham. Yes, the pre-Batman series developed by a um, mentalist creator, Bruno Heller, who's English, by the way. I didn't know that. Um, wow. Um, I saw all the clips. I saw all the trailers. I read all the interviews. I was excited already. But this was amazing. What I loved at the beginning with um, um, young Catwoman, I, whatever her name is, I can't, I can't remember Catwoman's other name, real name, but um, I'm sure someone can tell me that, because I've just, I've just got a brain freeze. And I'm actually, well, it won't be live when you watch it, but basically right now, I'm in Cyprus. This is where I live, so uh, two hours ahead of you. Uh, so Eric's bashed in my mind. But yeah, I love the opening scene with... Um, a young cat woman when she's um, like pickpocketing, stealing, climbing up stuff, and then she she sees young Bruce Wayne's parents getting murdered. I thought that was a brilliant little touch. Um, the actual uh, scene when they are murdered is very similar, really, to what we saw in Batman Begins. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I suppose it's just to keep in line with what DC have already done. But I, I mean, the young actor who plays Bruce Wayne, who was in touch with Kiefer Sutton. Sutherland, another name I'm forgetting what the young guy's called, but anyway, brilliant young actor, he's brilliant, but the star of this show is Ben McKenzie, you may remember Ben McKenzie from um, the OC, now from the moment he was on the OC, Ben McKenzie was, if you like, Warner Brothers' chosen one, he was, he was like, a, a, like a modern day James Dean, this was... This kid was going places from day one. Everyone at the top level at Warner Brothers were going on how amazing this kid was. And yes, he looked good, but they really, you know, enthused about his talent. And he was brilliant on the OC. Um, but this is, he was born. He was destined to play Jim Gordon. It's a, it's a brilliant way of doing a pre-Batman story. It works. The characters, the dynamics, the, the, the fish... Was it Fish Mooney? You know, that's an original character um, that's not in the comics, but really brilliant. But the whole the whole setup really it, it really excited me. It reminded me of watching the premiere, the pilot of Smallville. It was that excitement, the, the different positions they put the characters in that we haven't seen them before. But this really is about the Wayne's murder, and that's what drives the show. But also. It's Jim, it's Jim Gordon, you know, coming back to Gotham, Gotham and seeing this corrupt place and everyone telling him, you've got to get with the program, you've got to be corrupt as well, and he doesn't do that. And the other magical aspect is saying a young penguin, you know, Oswald Coppelbop. You know, we saw, we saw a young Riddler working for the police and moving his arms around like the Riddler does and trying to do a riddle and being stopped. Uh, brilliant, it's... I'm so excited about it, really. When I see stuff that's written well and acted well, I get so excited. This is the kind of world I've always dreamed to be in, to be writing, to be directing, to be acting. Something I haven't been able to do up to now, but I'm still battling. I'm still trying. So I want you to go and subscribe to my um, YouTube channel. I want you to watch my I Want to Run EastEnders videos. If you like my idea of how I would run EastEnders, Please tell the BBC. Really important. We could do something special together, as I said a million times. I don't get a lot of views on my YouTube. I'm trying to change that. I don't really know how it all works to get more views or promote myself. So anyone can help with that. That would be awesome. But so excited about Gotham. Really excited about Dallas and where we go from here. And of course, Emmerdale. Wow. Well done. Kate Oaks. Take a bow. We'll talk again. See ya.